Welcome to this week's Two Minute Tuesday. This week's topic is A set versus R set. Now, if that sounds confusing, I'm hoping this video will clear things up for you. I'm going to start off with a bit of background to set the scene. So, fire safety engineering is recognised within the building regulations as a potential means of providing an alternative approach to prescriptive fire safety solutions, such as approved document B. Fire engineering uses engineering tools to assess if the proposed specific building design will ensure a sufficient level of life safety or whether additional fire safety precautions are required. When considering means of escape, the prescriptive approach focuses on a building structure, ignoring the fact that both the fire hazard and the safe evacuation are time dependent. Using performance-based design, fire safety engineering, instead allows more accuracy while still observing general guidance in a benchmark sense. To implement fire safe designs that are not compliant with current legislation, the fire engineer must prove that the level of fire safety in the proposed design is equivalent to the level of safety outlined in the current building regulations. Basically, making sure that whatever they suggest is as good or better than what the regulations dictate. This brings us to our main topic for today, A set and R set. It's a common fire engineering tool to analyse the conditions in a building in the event of a fire. The basic aim of this approach is to show that the calculated time before conditions become untenable, which is the available safe egress time, A set, which is up here, always exceeds the required time to safely evacuate the building, the required safe egress time, or R set, which is down here. If that's the case, so if the A set exceeds the R set, then the safe evacuation of the building is considered always possible. Now let's dive into A set in a bit more detail. Essentially, the A set is the length of time we can maintain tenability in the fire escape routes. We've covered tenability in a previous video, but what we're talking about is conditions that don't cause incapacitation. That's what we mean by tenability. So A set is how long we can keep the escape routes safe for people to escape through. When designing a building, we can build up the amount of available safe egress time, the A set, using various things such as the type of non-combustible material or fire load, um, ceiling heights, smoke ventilation systems, sprinklers and so on. In a very loose sense, the more passive and active fire protection methods we add, the longer the A set becomes. A fire engineering approach uses all of these factors to calculate the specific A set for the building or space, always multiplying by a fire safety factor uh, to maintain a conservative approach. These things are usually calculated using computational fluid dynamic modelling. And whilst doing this, we consider things such as fire growth, flame spread, sprinkler or detection activation, suppression, and other types of fire-specific phenomena. Now that the A set is theoretically calculated, the R set is the essential remaining part of the equation. With that in mind, we'll now look at the required safe egress time, the R set, in order to determine exit strategy safety for the building and compare the two results. The required safe escape time is the amount of time that people will take to leave the building. Our reason for comparing R set with A set is to make sure it's always going to take less time for people to evacuate R set than it will for the escape routes to become untenable. So as we see here in this diagram, so the A set is longer than the R set here. When evaluating the R set, three components need to be considered. Detection time, pre-movement time and movement time. And these are loosely defined on this chart here. So we can see the detection time here. We can see the pre-movement time and the evacuation time, which includes travel time. And I'll talk you through each of those concepts now. So we'll go through them one by one. First of all, there's detection time. The detection time is the time from the ignition of the fire to the alarm being raised. The detection time, and as such, the R set, is highly dependent on the type of fire detection system provided. For example, a manual fire alarm system will likely mean a longer detection time than an automatic detection system with detection devices throughout the building. Next, pre-movement time. This is the time an occupant needs to recognise the situation and react to the alarm. Recognition includes the time required to get an occupant to take fire alarm cues seriously and recognise that some response to the emergency is required. Response consists of a range of activities such as investigation to find the source of the fire, warning others, saving possessions, gathering children and other family members, deciding on an exit route and potentially fighting the fire. As such, the pre-movement time is subject to influences such as 
the level of assistance in an emergency evacuation, for example, a managed e evacuation, uh, the level of fire safety training under undertaken by the occupants, the type of occupants, whether they're awake or sleeping, whether they're familiar with the building, say if it was in their residence, or if it was they're uh, unfamiliar with the building, if for example it's a hotel. Or if the building is fitted with a PA or voice alarm system to guide the behaviour of the occupants in an emergency situation. Finally, there's the movement time. The movement time is the physical time taken for the building's occupants to reach the place of safety once they have begun to evacuate. Uh, this is this section here as part of the full evacuation time. There are a number of methods available for making reasonably accurate predictions of evacuation patterns in fire emergencies. And these predictable flow patterns have followed the development of egress models, which can test both egress arrangements and predict movement times. The movement time is dependent on various factors, for example, the number and locations of escape routes, the width of escape routes and fire exits, the nature and number of occupants, the walking speed of occupants, for example, children versus adults and so forth, or the relation between and dependency grade of the occupants, so for example, families and children and so forth. Due to the complexity of the fire evacuation process and the number of factors influencing the actual movement time, hand calculations are only used to carry out assessments for simple means of escape arrangements. To model the evacuation process in a more complex building, fire engineers normally use computer models. Modern fire evacuation models consider all of the elements I mentioned previously and calculate a potential evacuation scenario and give information about the usage of escape routes, the time required to move from certain areas to a place of safety, and all the other criteria that are required to make a sound assumption for the movement time. By adding together the detection time, the pre-movement time, and the movement time, so all of these components here, we get the R set for the building. As this is a theoretical approach using computer models, the results are then multiplied by a safety factor to make sure it's as realistic as possible. Finally, we compare the A set to the R set, so these two points here, and provided the required safe egress time is shorter than the available safe egress time, then safe fire evacuation is ensured. If you've never come across the terms A set and R set before, then hopefully this gives you a basic understanding of the principles. If you're well versed in it, then I hope this video helped refresh your knowledge. And as always, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now.